look at this. Look at this. Look at this. These are half, y'all, I can't even get it in the video, half of our transplants. And I'm trying to harden them off the best I can. That's a very important step, hardening plants off. You must expose them to sunlight, preferably shaded, um, for, gosh, a week or two. Let me show you what else I am so excited about. We have two Meyer lemon trees and two pineapple plants here. So we're looking good. We've got all our transplants today. Y'all, it's a mess. Everything I've got is a mess. We've got cucumbers here. We've got, I mean, everything. So now I'm planting scallop squash. And I want you to see how I'm doing this. And yes, I have mop buckets. These are one gallon mop buckets. And they come from Dollar Tree. That's why they were a dollar. I am not an affiliate for Dollar Tree, <laughs> but most of what I talk about is Dollar Tree because we've not gotten to the in-ground gardens yet. And I want y'all to see this. Now, this is tried and true. This is not a will it work. This is it works. This is what you need to do. Okay, guys. So I want you to see what I'm about to do. This is one dollar. Now at my store, they come in red, black, and gray. Black does hold heat, so be careful of that. But for a dollar, I'll go in there and buy every bucket they've got. They'll restock and we'll go at it again. Now, so for anything that says container friendly, one plant per gallon, here you go. Now, I mean, this is kind of corny, but I even like the handle. They're lightweight, pick them up. Hey, I love it. There's your growth space right there. So I've got scallop squash. It says container friendly, can grow one plant per gallon. And like I said, this is tried and true. I did this last fall. I know it works. I tried bush beans with these. Um, five bush beans in the bucket did excellent. I had y'all, I don't know how many buckets lined up with these. I grew collards in these. I grew kale. I grew cabbage. It works. Now, Get worried about the plastic. This is, I believe you call it polyproline. It's what it's made out of. This right here is a level five. I don't know if you can see that or not. Level five. If you're worried about your plastic, any kind of plastic container, look on the back. If it's a level five, from what I've been told, it is okay to grow something in and eat out of it. Level five, and that's what these are. So all we need our drainage holes, got our drill here. Be very careful with this because it's apt to go right through the bucket. Okay. And here's a trick. If it's very hot outside and it's sun shining, you can do this. But if it's where it's cooler, this plastic hardens up and it's not as flexible and you'll bust the bottom of it with a drill. So that's just a tip from what I have seen. I may bust this right now, but if, it's, if it gets hot, it's almost like you just go right through it. And you can use a screwdriver to poke holes in it. But the drill is much easier. So you can tell this has been out in the heat. It's pliable. I'm just putting a little pressure down when I drill in. That way it's not as apt to break. I've got, in fact, this bucket was bought last year, um, but I never did put drainage holes in it. If you want to um, 
try these out. I can't tell you how long they'll last. I had a plant growing in this. No, I didn't. This one was empty, but I had bought it last year. That's right. Um, some of these I did have plants grown in. I've got so many. But I know they lasted from last year. And just this uh, trial experiment, I left these outside in the elements, and they've done just fine. So, guys, hey, for a dollar, you, you cannot beat this. I mean, it, it's a buck. So, all right. Now, there is your one-gallon container. Second thing is, this one I've already started on, if you can see this squash here. Well, last year, our squash in the garden made. Did all right. However, now this I've got, um, well, let me talk about the garden. Y'all, I'm, I'm so excited about this. I'm off track. So, <clears throat> The squash in the garden did great, but every time it got ready to pick, now I like mine smaller, I, tender for frying, it would rot on the end. Okay, well, I picked them up off the ground. They're sitting in water. That must be what it is. That's what the internet says. Nope, picked them up. Nope, squash fine boar. Nope, plant was healthy. All the fruit was rotting from the bottom. It had blossom in rot. Watermelons are bad about that. Squash, zucchini, uh, anything with a blossom on the end. Any kind of melon. Uh, pumpkins can do it. Pumpkins sure can do that. Uh, any kind of fruit that comes right off of a blossom or vegetable. And, of course, tomatoes. So, with all my tomato plants that I plant, I've planted an egg in the hole. Now, the only warning about that is, is <clears throat> or last year I did that, you will... Uh, lose some plants in your pasture garden your field your raised bed whatever to critters they will try to dig the plant up to get the egg they leave the plant alone they want that egg so i am gonna put one of my eggs here it was a little dirty and i said i don't want to throw it away and i really don't want to wash it because everything we've got now would just about incubate i said let me use these for plants so i didn't even uh play with anything um I'm going to put it in the hole. The blossom end rot, from what I understand, is a lack of calcium. So, that's what the egg is. You can also use Tums. If anything, it's just going to help fertilize it. So, that's an old timer trick right there. Throw it down in there. Now, my other plants, I did not put these in. I put Tums in. And that might be your best bet if you're planting out somewhere where uh, you don't have very good pest control, like out in a pasture or a field. Now, on this one, I actually forgot to do it when I planted the little plant, so I won't kind of put it to the side. Don't leave the egg in here like this. You want to bust it open with your trowel, or whatever you call this thing. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, bust it open. That way, the egg will go ahead, seep on in there, and you won't find a rotten egg when you dig your plant up because that's not going to be a pleasant experience. So you want to go ahead and start the breakdown of the egg now. And if it's not broken up, it's really no good. I mean, it would take forever to decompose so, and you don't want that. That is a quick trick for blossom end rot. And we'll see how it does this year, but I can testify, I can attest to it works for tomatoes. The only problem is, is whatever animals want to eat that egg. So we're going to try it with squash, but I know the um, Dollar Tree mop buckets will work. And the reason I got mop buckets, guys, I would love beautiful planters all over here, but I'm not, I'm not going to pay for 500 planters. I'm not going to do it. I mean, I, I like to plant. I like to garden. I like to grow in the ground. I mean, that's, of course, my favorite. But, y'all, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spend that much money because I want to expand my gardening and have things on the deck, the porch, the patio, wherever. So the only way I could do that is for a dollar and do this and it works. I don't know how large you can push these. Um, I will say the requirements, if you look online for things, is not always true. Now for it to be optimum, you need to go off guidelines of what you research and see. But you can grow things in smaller containers than what it requires. You can grow it, and it may not be its best, but you can grow it. But this is exactly what this little scallop 
squash requires. Anything that says bush container variety will do fine in here. This is one gallon. Y'all, drop an egg in that mop bucket. We'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead.